we're out for a literal Sunday drive, and we're going to go check out a small town and a special grain elevator. I'll explain more later. All right, so we're just uh, stopped along the side of the highway here as, you know, part of our uh, part of our Sunday drive is that we don't actually have any sort of a plan beyond what I've already talked about. So it's kind of a let's see what we see along the way and we slam the brakes on and stop because we saw this. Check that out. I can't tell if it's an old school or an old church or as is the case with a lot of these buildings a lot of times they serve both functions at different points of their history so even though there is a gap in the fence there because it is behind a fence I'm not going to go in and explore any closer I'm just shooting here from the road but in looking at those windows those kind of have a more school like look to them more than a uh, than a church and it is kind of funny with the power pole in behind there it almost looks like a cross on top but I can assure you it is not but this is a great building and apparently neither of us remember seeing this before so somehow I'm just walking through a really deep snow drift here so if I trip and fall you'll know oh um, but neither of us remember seeing this before so this must be new territory for us I should have checked my Google Maps on this side of highway too before we got this far and I'm sure it won't translate on camera but I'm trying to see inside looks like a lot of pigeon crap and some graffiti nothing else inside but still fantastic building just sitting here on the side of the highway glad we got a chance to stop and take a look at it and the other great thing is that there was a convenient place to pull over and stop off the road so that I could actually go and get a look at it without uh, causing traffic problems surprising amount of traffic hey there's Mabel Emily's here as well but surprising amount of traffic for being a relatively minor back road but let's carry on now as I alluded to back there I've done a lot of playing around with my my Google map and it's a feature of Google Photos that I don't think a lot of people know about or take advantage of but essentially what it is is that if you have geotagged photos or photos with location information embedded into the EXIF data of the picture Google will actually plot all those photos for you on a map and use a um, heat gradient map to show you where most of your pictures have been taken. And so when we're running out of ideas of places to go or things to see, I will often sit down with the, the Google map and just start scrolling around and look for areas where there's a big gap in the heat map and then I know that we either haven't been to that area before or we never took pictures in that area before so it's just a way to kind of help get us out and see different things and check out different territory so it's a it's a neat little feature that more people should check out Knee Hill Valley Community Center. Did not expect to see that come up over the rise there. So as you can tell, we have uh, jumped off the pavement and decided to start traveling down some of these uh, gravel back roads just to see something different. Of course, 
the more time you spend on the pavement, the more likely you are to see things you've probably already seen or see things that other people have seen when part of the fun is supposed to be getting out and finding different things. And that's one of the reasons why we brought the truck today instead of the more fuel efficient car is we figured we're going to go on some roads and take some different routes and we don't know what we're going to run into so having something with four-wheel drive a little more clearance some more aggressive tires is never a bad thing when you're doing this kind of exploration we have arrived in lusana just doing a quick drive around the town and uh, seeing what's here and making sure i get a couple pictures so it fills it in on my map 10th Street. Oh, yeah, it's just the remnants, the archway of the school from 1929. That's kind of cool. A little bit of history left there. This is definitely one of those towns where you get the vibe from it that it's basically like any vehicle that is not from the town immediately draws a lot of attention. Some really nicely maintained homes though. It doesn't feel creepy, it just feels like a small town where everyone knows everybody. So there really isn't much in Lusana, the town itself, but as I alluded to earlier, we're really here because of the Lusana grain elevator. Now, I don't know where it was originally located, but it makes sense. It would have been somewhere here in town along the train tracks, but it was built in 1928 and it was moved to a private farm about six kilometers east of town in 1973. So that's really what we're here to find is the grain elevator that was moved out of town in 1973. Now the reason I find this one really interesting is it's an elevator from the Alberta Pacific Grain Company. Now according to the research that uh, our late friend Jim Pearson has on his website. At one point there were about 249 Alberta Pacific grain elevators in Alberta and as of uh, his research back in 2005 and still as of today there's only five that are left and we have visited four of them at various times. Those would be, let's see if I got a good memory, Rayleigh, Castor, and no, my memory isn't that good. Um, oh, Dorothy, of course, is the third. And there is a fourth one that is in Meeting Creek, Alberta. Yes, so there we go. Those are the other four. Lusana's is the fifth. And like I said, it's on a private farm, so we're going to start heading east of town to see if we can find it. So while you were filming, this guy pulled into town, must be a local resident. He did the full head turn he's like what is that guy doing and then he looked at our truck and he's like what the heck why are there people here <laughs> and we have a visual on the uh grain elevator from lusana it's just there off to the right of the road now as i mentioned it is on a uh, private farmyard and is privately owned so we probably won't be able to get super close but I'm hoping we can get uh, a couple good pictures of it at least from an adjacent road. I know you won't be able to see it there behind me but that is the Lusana grain elevator. Managed to get a couple pictures of it here from the road. Uh, you can probably hear the signal light going because I am parked right in the middle of the road here. But it is very cool just to get a chance to see it. Uh, the last Alberta Pacific grain elevator that uh, we haven't seen yet. So there we go. Get you a little bit better look here. 
If it wasn't on private property, I would throw the drone up, but that's a great way to get drono can shot down. So, the Lusana grain elevator, built in 28, moved here in 1973. So that kind of concludes the planned portion of our trip, or at least planned as much as we ever plan anything. So now we're just cruising random gravel roads again. Uh, there's a geocache out here that claims to be located near an abandoned farmhouse, which of course always gets our attention. So we're just kind of navigating to that along these back roads. Um, I didn't feel too good about this one just because of how narrow it was, but there were other tracks on here, so that gave me the confidence to assume this is a maintained road. Just because it's on the GPS doesn't mean it's a maintained road, as the tow truck driver from AMA taught me many years ago. So this must be the abandoned house in question coming up here. Oh yeah. That's nice, that's had a few additions to it over the years. And it's a nice time of the year, in the summer it'd be hidden behind the trees. Just a quick look at it here. I can hear a car in the distance and I'm not sure if it's on this road or not and I didn't pull over as far as I possibly could have, but neat abandoned house porches collapsed on it but a great little find here on a random back road thank you one bad ant slash judy our friend who placed the cash here that let us find this place well, coming up to an intersection here some random road now it's about one o'clock in the afternoon and we have to start working our way home but we're going to have a little creative fun on the way home here with some route finding. We have to travel southwest in order to get home. And so we don't want to go any further north or any further east today. So what we're going to do is when we get to a viable intersection is we're going to let Google pick our direction, whether we go south or west. Now, since this is a dead end ahead of us there with no exit, this is not a viable intersection. So we are going to turn and go west. And wow, that intersection is very slick. The rear tires are just sliding all over trying to get traction. I'm not actually in four wheel drive right now. I, you know, save that for when you really need it. So, all right, westbound and down till the next intersection. All right, this, nope, nope, we thought this was going to be a viable intersection, but that one is also no exit. I suspect a lot of these that are heading south from here will be no exits because I think there's a number of lakes in this area that probably mean the roads don't go through. So for now, we continue west. So we've been uh, pre-planning some of the rules here while we go down the road. At the intersections, we'll ask Google to pick a number, either one or two. One will be south, two will be west. And we'll do this for maybe the next, oh, 55 minutes or so till we get till two o'clock. And then at two o'clock, we're going to have to start hot footing it towards home because we have things to do. Emily has uh, orders to pack for her vintage shop, Hair of the Frog, on the Instagram. Check them out. Please buy something. And I want, of course, start doing some video editing. So it's going to take a few hours for the old Mac to crunch through all this video and things. So I want to get that started. But that's going to be our rules of the game for now. Disclaimer, we reserve the right to modify the rules without notice or obligation. Okay, this looks like a viable nope, intersection. Oh, no, there is another. Just to prove we're not cheating. No exit sign. So on to the next one. reason for any lack of southbound roads. There's just not a lot of roads, period, at all in this area. You might have to go all the way to Highway 21. And just so you're all aware, I will 
have a viable intersection here because the no exit sign is to the north this time but to the west and the south we have roads so let's see what happens hey pick a number there's no internet connection at the moment Ask Mabel. Okay, well, that really throws a wrench into things. If Mabel gives us her left paw, we turn. If she gives us her right paw, we go straight. Mabel, paw. Oh, left. So Mabel says left. So that means we turn left? I wasn't listening to your rules. Yes. Okay, left it is. All right, we are now southbound on some random gravel road. It's interesting that when we hang out with our Saskatchewan friends, they're always called grid roads. But I don't recall growing up in Alberta ever hearing them referred to as grid roads. We always just called them gravel roads or whatever. So I don't know what your terminology is, but we've kind of adopted the uh, Saskatchewan grid road uh Nomer, which makes sense because they're pretty much laid out in a grid when you get out into this part of the prairies. Ooh, a steep hill warning sign. Those are always fun. Especially when the roads are this icy. So I'm going to just take it quite gentle here from the top. And we just came to an intersection I wasn't expecting, so anti-lock brakes for the win. And let's see if we have internet. Pick a number between one and two. Yeah, that didn't work. Okay, hang on. Let's go to Mabel. Hang on. There's no internet connection at the moment. Yeah, thank you, Google. If she okay. gives us her left paw, we go straight. If she gives us her right, we turn right. Okay. Mabel, paw. Oh, left. Okay, we keep going, going straight. straight. I have a feeling the bro the dog is right brain dominant and was just going to default to the left all the time. This is hardly know. a random sample, I but don't know. I don't know if we're going to discover anything new down these roads, but we are oh, welcome to Knee Hill County, but we're probably going to learn something new about the dog. But uh, once we get some internet connection, we'll get the, the whole Google thing going like we originally planned. As you can tell, again, our lack of planning is part of the charm. Okay, so I pre-checked and our Google friend here actually... You got it. Apparently I've got it. And our Google friend here actually has internet connection. So we're going to try it now for the first time, kind of what the original idea was. So one is south, two is west. Hey, pick a number between one and two. Hey, pick a number between one and two. Hey, are you there? I'm here, always ready to help at a moment's notice. Apparently that's not true. Hey, pick a number between one and two. I don't know, maybe she doesn't like the options of one or two. Let's uh, make two, her... Even and odd. I was going to say, let's roll a die and even is south, odds are west. Hey, roll a die. Okay, that's not working. Let's see. Let me try it without... Let's voice activate it from the... Roll a die. Just a moment. Spinning. Spinning. Still spinning. Maybe if I hold my phone up, I'll get better signal. Still just says, just a moment. Okay, well, this is going to take up pretty much the entire hour. Oh, she did something. Maybe it is holding the phone up. Come on. Roll a die. Back to just a moment. Okay, well, this.
This is getting us nowhere. Mabel, it's up to you. Hey, Siri. Mm -hmm. Roll a die. Two. Apple for the win. No. <laughs> Two. What did we say? Even as straight? Even as south, yes. Okay. Because you know if you're from the west, you're odd. No offense, people. I'm from the west, so, you know, it kind of fits. All right, we're off. Okay, so for those keeping score at home, this is range, we're on Range Road 232, and I pulled too far ahead to read what township road we're at. It's uh, 232 and... 342. All right, township road 342. We're going to give this another try. Google's got one last chance to redeem, it's weird to call it redeem herself, but uh, redeem itself. Roll a die. Are you kidding me? It says I've got like five bars of 4G service. Does Siri have to bail you out again, Google? Hang on, hang on. Well, the funny thing is I brought up the phone. It actually did eventually roll a die. It shows a one, but I want her to say it, not just display it. Hey, oh yeah, roll a die. It's not doing it, it's just bringing up a website that's called Roll a Die. Oh, it pains me to say this, but okay, let's see what Siri comes up with. Hey Siri, uh -huh. roll, roll a die. It's six. Straight ahead we go. That's so weird <laughs> that, maybe only our Google Home does that. I don't know, yeah. I mean, the really sad thing about this whole thing is we're going through this entire exercise. We've been at it for almost 20 some minutes now. So it's just about 1.30. So we're halfway through this portion of the trip and all this random back roads driving hasn't really revealed any awesome sights to us yet. It's just been gravel and snow and prairie, but I'm still holding out hope that uh, we will find another cool abandoned school or something, or maybe a town with a subway, because I'm really hungry. Video not sponsored by Subway. Okay, so we're just having a quick debate here. The sign ahead says gravel ends. I'm not sure if you can read that or not. So I guess considering it's winter and things will be pretty frozen, the fact that it's just gonna be dirt is probably gonna be okay. So we'll consider this a viable intersection. And since I've given up on Google helping us out, let's ask Siri. Hey. Mm -hmm. Roll a die. Okay. Three. Yes, we're going west. Finally an odd number. Yeah, well, not only because that is that adds some fun to it, but I'm a little nervous about gravel ends, just, you know, because... I've gotten myself in a few situations before, and AMA tow truck drivers aren't always uh, my friends in those situations. What do you mean it's a maintained road? <laughs> it's like, well, it's on my map. Anyway, that's another story for another day. One disadvantage, if you will, of traveling west is that we will get to our next intersection sooner than if we were going south. When the land surveyors came through this area, they laid out all these range roads and township roads in such a way that they are two miles between each other when you're going north-south, but only one mile between each other when you're traveling east-west. So for the Canadians in the group, that is, uh, of course, 3.2 kilometers when you're going north and south, 1.6 when you're going east-west, roughly. Don't come at me conversion geeks. Anyway, uh, looks like we have a sign here. I don't know if this is a, doesn't look like a viable intersection to me. That just looks like a dirt that's track. Not, that's not a good road. That is not a road. That's, that's a road allowance, which basically is, you know, they set the land aside when they did the surveying for future roads, but not all of them developed into roads. So road allowances do not count. That's a new rule we just made up.
next road, Range Road 234, Township Road 340. Casey. Uh-huh. Roll a die. It's six. Even. South again. Yep. Yes. Okay. All right. Train line there, so I think the town, next town that we're kind of coming towards is Troshu, if I remember correctly. Yes. And it's kind of funny. I had just uh, just posted a picture from July of 2019 on my Instagram page of the grain elevator in Troshu. Hey, sorry. Uh, whoa, hang on. Whoops, sorry. <laughs> Okay, so we are at the edge of uh, the outskirts, or not the edge of the outskirts. We're at the outskirts of Troshu, and uh, basically we're doing another one of our uh, audibles at the line of scrimmage, if you will. When we get this one, we're going to follow that path through and past the town. So if we get directed into town, we're not going to stop and do this at every intersection in town. So that's the rule. Now... Let's roll those bones, Dougie. Hey. Uh huh. Roll a die. I don't understand. What? Hey Siri. Okay, so we are oh. at the edge no. of the outskirts. Oh, she was oh, listening she to was everything. Li hey Siri. Mhm. Mm roll a die. Rolling. It came up for. South it is. Mm -hmm. On through the edge of Troshu. Sounds like a bad uh, soap opera from the 70s. That was the edge of night, but this is the edge of Troshu. There is the Troshu grain elevator. Like I said, I just posted a picture of that on Instagram this morning, purely by coincidence. I actually didn't know at that time that we would be coming this way. Or was it yesterday I posted it? I don't know. But either way, Troshu grain elevator, second grain elevator on this trip. Okay, so we come to our next intersection here, and there's a no exit sign, so that's not viable, so we are forced to head to the west. No need to ask that lousy Apple product uh, which direction to go this time. Okay, rolling through Troshu, over the tracks that we've been following the last little while. And like I said, we're just going to stick with this road right through town and then we'll resume our little activity on the other side but uh, made sure to stop and grab a photo of the grain elevator because you never know how long they will be around even though they look viable that's an old school mm -hmm. it's been converted to other uses and the main industrial part and we learned on the town sign coming in that Troshu is the pinkest town in the west voted 2010 something like that okay we're at our intersection here you want to do it quick for uh because I got cars behind me so I can't stop hi it's one odd odd so we go west okay there we go all right, we have 14 minutes left till our self-imposed two o'clock deadline and we've reached another intersection. Hey. Uh-huh. Roll a die. It's three this time. Oh, uh, three. Okay. We continue west. Westward ho, we continue. Okay, another intersection, another die roll. Hey, Roll a die. It's one this time. Okay. Still going straight. Hey, C. Mm -hmm. Roll a die. It's three this time. Oh, still going straight. remaining. Ten minutes remaining, teams. According 
to Miriam Webster. Oh. To succeed or do something good after one has failed or done something bad, they can redeem themselves for yesterday's loss by winning today's game. Okay, you know how you can redeem yourself? Google. Hey, Google. Roll. Hey, Google. Roll a die. Hey, Siri. Bail out. Bail out, Google, and roll a die. It's four this time. Okay, south we go. This one I can flip uh, while recording. That is a game changer. And I'm going to apologize in advance for overusing that from now on. that one a little bit in advance here because we're coming up to a major road so we're going to continue south if I can stop on all this ice let's assume I did and carry on all right this is our next intersection coming up it's 157 so I suspect this will probably be the penultimate google slash Siri choice hey intersection so we just roll on through we'll see if we get one more in before the time limit reaches I doubt it well it's two o'clock and we didn't get to the next intersection so that's gonna end our little uh, random travel game for today and probably put an end to this video we're just going to hot foot it towards home and follow the GPS's uh, suggestion, which means it's probably going to put us along Highway 2 for a good chunk of the distance, and that will wrap it up. So, anything you want to add? No, it was a nice outing, beautiful day, just fun to get out and about. All right, thank you very much for watching, and uh, sorry for the lack of content, but that's just the way things have gone lately, and I don't know when the next video will be done, but 